as you uh, read Chapter 18, you probably saw a lot of concepts and a lot of definitions, and you are expected to know those. Um, but before we moved out of Chapter 18, before you started doing the homework, I wanted to uh, draw your attention specifically to three exhibits you can find in the text. Uh, and spend a few minutes making sure you understood those and, and making sure that you realize how important they are. Uh, in the next couple of chapters, in Chapter 19 and 20, uh, we'll be referring back to these concepts. So the first of these is um, uh, Exhibit 8. It's actually on page uh, 837 of your text. Um, and what this exhibit is trying to point out that, you know, imagine you were looking at a uh, company and, and they asked, this company made uh, baseballs. And they asked a fairly simple question, how much does it cost to make a baseball? Um, and, and they're asking it in the past tense. How, how much did it cost us to make a baseball last year or last month even? Uh, what, would, what would be your first step? And the first step you would do is say, well, tell me what all of your costs were. And if you look at the very top of that exhibit, that's what they're saying. You take all of the costs of a company. Um, and then your next step would be to separate those costs. You know, you would see costs in there like, I don't know, the president's salary or a uh, advertisement that they had purchased. Well, those aren't related to making a baseball. So those costs we would actually refer to as period costs. And we would treat those just like we did in accounting one and two. Um, they would go as expenses on the income statement. Those are utilities, insurance, things like that. But then you would have other costs that weren't, uh, that were rather related to making the baseballs. So you'd have things like, uh, you know, the, the leather and the, the lace um, and so on. Those costs we refer to as product costs. And of course the product costs, we break into those three categories you read about. We would take those product costs and break them into direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead. And what this exhibit is pointing out is that all the costs are either going to be period costs or product costs. If they are product costs related to making that item, they don't get expensed immediately. They go to the balance sheet, and then from the balance sheet when sold, that's when they would get expensed. Just like inventory got expensed back in Chapter 6 for our retailers in Accounting 1. The other... The other exhibit's on page 840. It's a uh, cost of goods manufactured. And in essence, this is just showing, and it, it doesn't uh, show it graphically, but it does show basically what we talked about. This is those product costs from the prior period or that prior slide. And you can see there, it's the direct materials, and then there's labor, and then there's factory overhead. And this is just a statement that we need to get familiar with right now. Um, you'll be doing these in the homework and it will actually be on the exam. So you want to just take a look at it, but it's pretty straightforward. How much did you have in product costs? How much did you add in direct materials, direct labor, and factory overhead? That's the total we have to account for. And just like that other one said, it either goes into the inventory or the income statement. And then the final exhibit is actually on page 841. And this is one that you might want to print out and sort of just keep handy. Um, I'm usually not a big fan of these little arrow things. They tend to be confusing, but this one actually is pretty good. And it's showing us, again, what we do with our manufacturing costs. Once they're identified as product costs, what happens to them? And you can see the arrows. They're going into the manufacturing process. And this basically would be like the balance sheet. Um, and then at the end of that period, they're either finished, in which case they go to the finished goods inventory, or it's not finished where we have them in the work and process inventory, and then when sold goes the cost of goods sold. The reason I brought this up is because in the next two chapters we're going to be figuring out how to do the amounts of those arrows. Well and good we know those arrows exist, but how do we figure out how much dollars are actually put on those arrows? Um, so in any case, look at this one. Like I said, may even want to print this one out and try to fully understand it.